How many have stopped coming to church just because of a boyfriend and a girlfriend? I'm taking a post so that you may think, is there somebody today who is not in church because you had broke that person and took his friend or her friend? Listen to what LNG White says in Adventist Home, page 43, paragraph 1. By the way, you need to read that book, Adventist Home. Listen to this one. No one can so effectively risk a woman's happiness and usefulness. A person who can destroy a woman's happiness and usefulness and make his life, uh, make uh, life heart sickening burden as her own husband. Now, because you're not married, as her own what? Boyfriend. No, and no one can do one hundredth part, one over hundred, as much as chill the hopes and aspiration of a man and paralyze his energies and ruin his influences and prospect, pro prospects as his own wife. Now because you don't have wives, you have girlfriends, they can do that. It is from the marriage hour that many men and women beat their success for failure in life. The moment you will say, yes, I do in the pulpit. From that time, you will beat your success or your what? Your failure. And this area has been the most effective part that the devil has used to ruin many, many Christians. You will not be found in drinking, drugs, in doing crazy, crazy things that people are doing, but the devil can successfully unite you with a person who will ruin completely your influence towards God. I just want to talk to you. Yesterday I was telling you somebody who, was stay, who had stayed nine years in school doing medicine and yet got out of campus without a girlfriend. I've been preaching and going to local churches. You'll find youths of uh, 28, 29, 30, 31, up to 40 years in church. A certain clique of youths, they are not in the junior youth, they are not in what? In the senior youth. They are hanging somewhere because if they come even to senior youth, they don't fit because they are gratis. Sometimes you ask a person what is happening. You find others do not have a job, a, a stable job. Do you know finances have made homes to be broken? Yes, I know that just by me, we live by faith. But we live in faith in marriage. Because you need to pay rent, you need to take your wife to the hospital, you need to, you know, on the quagrao vitu ni tofauti. Live alone that you are holding hands, escorting someone to the ladies hostel, you reach at the ladies hostel, she escorts you to the men's hostel, you go like that until midnight and have them every day. Tell your neighbor, kwa grao vitu ni tofauti. It's different. And it's better that I tell you. And somebody, a lady was telling me, I need a responsible man. But when I look, most of these men are not responsible. These are people, when I am pregnant, they can go out and leave me. Ask your neighbor, are you responsible? 
you know, you are driving somebody's daughter crazy. You are driving somebody's uh, son crazy in this campus. You cannot even buy a diaper. I just want to tell you that this issue of boyfriend and girlfriend, most of us, we are wasting our energy and time and money and emotions instead of keeping them until the night time. I just want to tell you ladies who are here and men who are here, once a man, are there people graduating this year? Are there people graduating this year? Yes. If you are a man, we will give you two to three years to settle down before you think about marriage. Kwagrao vitu ni tofauti, my brothers. Because you need a house, you need some furniture, you need, you, you need to prepare yourself before you bring a lady. And some of us, it might take even five years. Some ladies who are graduating this year, let me tell you, your men might not be here. They are working somewhere. Amen. <laughs> so tell your neighbor, stop wasting your time. <laughs> okay, let's look at uh, another thing that uh, makes us to be defeated, alliances. Everybody say alliances. alliances. Let's go to the book of Leviticus chapter 18 verse 3. Leviticus chapter 18 verse 3. The Bible says, you must not do as they do in Egypt, where they used to live. And you must not do as they do in Canaan, where I am bringing you do not follow their practices. If you look at the book of Leviticus chapter 18, the title is Unlawful Sexual Relations. And it lists all the relationships there that are unlawful, including the LGBTQs there. I was reading when I was teaching about LGBTQ, I hope I'll get time to teach a little bit of it. A gentleman got a beautiful lady in the supermarket. He greeted her, said, do you mind if I take you out? She said, she not take me out. Come to my house. She gave him the location. This gentleman came. The lady prepared for him nice food while they were eating. He said, who is that at the wall? I mean, there was a picture. Don't tell me that is your husband, no? Don't tell me that is your boyfriend, no? Who's that? That is me when I was a gentleman. <laughs> Do you know there are people here who might date and think it's a, a lady, but it's not a gentleman? And there are others you might date thinking it's a man, but it is what? A lady. Now, the, the, the alphabet letters, LGTB, they are alphabet from A to Z, they represent each group, each group, each group. I hope we'll have time to, to look at them. Each group, each group. You may date a man who is attracted to the opposite sex and also attracted to the same sex. So you'll find that you have married this lady, another lady comes into the house, you think she has come to greet her, whom they have come to do what? Sex, they are lesbians. When you think about marriage, double what? Yes. Today we took a motorbike, I was with the uh, the one who carried us told us there's somebody who got out of prison very soon and he took a panger and cut the wife in the head and the head went into two pieces. 
and he went to a tall tree and hung himself. So they were looking for him only to see him where? On the tree. These days, if it were possible, if it were possible, our minds will be checked by the psychiatrist to see if we are right for marriage. Otherwise, you are going to kill somebody's son or daughter. I just want to talk to you this evening that there are things that can make iron chariots defeat us. But if we are with Jesus Christ, that is why we are having these seminars to prepare us to face the iron chariots. God knows that they have iron chariots, they are stronger than us. They are numerous, many than us. But he says, do not fear, for I am with you. This evening, I want to talk to somebody. I don't care what you are going through in this campus. The only main thing I want to tell you, put God first in everything that you do. I want to give you the last verse before we pray. Psalms chapter 46 verse 9. This is also a good one. If you are experiencing something in your life, you feel that it is weighing you down, claim this promise. He makes wars to cease. What do we say? He makes wars to cease. To the ends of the earth, he breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shield with fire. What do we say? Amen. These are the things that the enemies will use. Tell God, I do not have peace in my life. I am troubled. I want you to make the war inside me to cease in the mighty name of Jesus. Break the bows and shatter the spears, the spears and burn the shield with fire. Evil thoughts and all those tell God to break them and burn them with fire. How many together with me are saying, God, make the war inside me to cease. It could be fear. It could be compromise. It could be alliances. You are busy advertising in your status about football. What you are arsenal was in PSU, whatever, but you have never even shared a text. You need to think about your life twice. How many together with me are saying, God, may you give us the peace that the world does not know by burning the spears, breaking the bows, the bows, and also doing what? Burning the shields with the fire. How many are saying that? Are you serious? Can you stand up? Be this That's number what? Is it one it one? Ninety-nine. Let's go to ninety-nine and sing that song seriously as we knowing that God will take care of us. Be no dismay, three of Be no Yeah. 
thank you for the consolation from this song that you will take care of us. We thank you even dear loving Lord in the Bible you have encouraged us. Even though our enemies are many, they are stronger than us, that they have iron chariots that we should not be afraid of. For the fight is yours and the victory is ours. While we are preparing to go for a mission, we'll meet iron chariots. Help us to remove fear from us, compromises, things that will make us to be defeated. And we are praying this night, as we disperse, disperse us with the Holy Spirit, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you abundantly. Please, there are people who are, here, who are going far like diaspora. If you are going the same route, go with them. Be your brothers. Is that okay? Have a blessed night.